think uh <clears throat> i think if i just sit here and chill out vibing with this music for too long i'm never gonna get around to actually starting this stream hey everybody happy thursday we are here as you can probably tell back for some more arkham horror the card game um got the layout set up first uh though i wanted to go through and talk about the deck that i've been playing as everyone's thursday been going i feel uh strangely drained um like like a like i like i'm like i am tired but at the same time i have energy to keep on going and i'm going to use that energy to go through and play a super fun scenario that whenever i looked into anything about this game before actually buying it people have been recommending uh non-stop so, as you can guess from the title, that one in particular is Murder at the Excelsior Hotel Scenario Pack. And I'm actually doing it as a side quest as part of the campaign I'm currently playing. I did, in fact, after going through Night at the Zealot, um, like, three times? I think it was three times, uh, all the way through. Um, decided, you know what? This game is a lot of fun. I'm going to pick up a campaign. And I went with... Um, uh Pats of Carcosa and that one has been oh, so much fun. Uh a really good time. So uh innovative. It's got a lot of surprises for it, which I'm really glad I was surprised from a few of the things that the course set introduced. Um so yeah I've been having a good time with it. Uh and I figured since they have a mechanic for inserting your uh these scenario packs into the campaign uh we might as well go ahead and go with that um i won't i don't think i should talk about uh carcosa calling or uh carcosa too much here in this stream because one of the nice things definitely is just being able to avoid or um one one thing that should be noted is like the narrative element of the game is phenomenal something i've really been enjoying as someone who's a fan of the lord of the rings game something else i've been playing again a lot of um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't really want to spoil anything too much for folks, but, um, uh, this is the deck I've been playing for that. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much just a tuned version of, um, uh, Jekyll and Fine starter deck that you get, um, for Night of the Zealot, I did run, uh, more or less the deck that it came with and then just upgraded from there. This one's based off the version that the, um, playing board games folks recommended and they have a lot of Arkham Horror content. Um, so there's a, a few things uh, in here that I've included, I think compared to their version. Um, for one, I don't have another shriveling, so I only have two magic guns and instead I actually picked up Hypnotic Gaze, which is not the, you know, sexiest card, but I tell you what, when you need it to work, it gets the job done. So much so that I decided I'm going to go ahead and invest in the upgraded version with two of the experience points I've been gaining through the campaign so that if I run into anything that deals uh, horror or damage, um, I, I can be sure to actually hit back at it um, since, slight spoiler, um, the first scenario for Carcosa, you do run into enemies that only deal horror damage. So that, that seemed like it might be a good idea to pick up. As far as other upgrades, did go with the boosted guts just because um, this deck wants to have everything, uh, be a, what is it, willpower, right? Willpower test, and then, um, boosted Azure Flame, because <laughs> I'm playing solo with this deck, I've got to do everything, uh, on my own, I might as well just, you know, be sure that, uh, if I run into something I need to shoot, I, I'm succeeding, that's it. So that's it pretty much there, as far as the upgrades. And the deck itself isn't, I think, anything that would be too wild for folks. I did end up picking a second corset up, the classic corset, since I have the old one. And I'm really happy I did because, man, having two warded protections has been um, very nice and pretty reliable so far. Um, and then double arcane initiates as well, just because, um, man, sometimes you are digging for these spells and it is so difficult. <laughs> To actually try and find them and thanks to actually how the um campaign's been going it's not too hard to get rid of the arcane initiate so that her uh doom token doesn't uh, account for anything too much i did make a mistake and play letting the doom trigger for one of the particular scenarios 
Um, uh, but I won't, like, again, not trying to spoil too much for the campaign for anyone who's looking to get into the game. I will say, though, uh, Path of Carcosa is, is, is super good. Super, super good. Am I calling it the right name, by the way? Path to Carcosa. Okay, yeah, Path to Carcosa. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Astral Travel, surprisingly, has been very handy. Just being able to move around on the board where you need to. Uh, I didn't expect to actually need this, and I considered cutting it for a while, but I'm glad that I didn't. Um, since being able to warp from one part of the scenario to the other part to escape, essentially getting cornered by enemies has become really, really handy. Um, in particular, uh, the first part of the Kako scenario, the, the, um, the first scenario, uh, Curtain Call, I think it's called. Um, that one, it's just, it, it basically has you going left and right and being able to just reliably, um, go where you need to has been great. Uh, but again, not going to talk too much about the campaign. I think I'll, I'll have like a final campaign thoughts, uh, chat later on. If I get back around to, uh, playing some Arkham on stream again, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and switch scenes here. Boom, there we go, desktop, and tilt this a little bit, uh, because I think I might have bumped <laughs> when I was trying to set up, and boom, here we go, murder at the Excelsior, or at the Excelsior Hotel, um, and I actually haven't even uh, opened up the car blisters yet, like I've just, um, like I've had it for a while now, and I just haven't popped it open yet, so that's, that's what we're going to do first. Uh, I did take the peel off, and I have looked at the manual, but that's about it. You know, one thing about the way that this uh, box is set up, I was really confused. I was I was thinking, oh, this must mean, like, they have just really large cards uh, for this particular um, expansion. But no, that, that, that would be silly. They just have two separate, like, packs that contain the card that you need. So, cool stuff. And I really love the artwork that's on this, I will say. Just the, the way that the Excelsior Hotel looms menacingly. Uh, in the back there. Oh, one thing I did want to note before I forget, uh, Pata Carcosa, I had trouble with the fourth scenario. <laughs> um, uh, like the first few were, the first one was kind of rough and then the next two were not particularly, um, uh, daunting, although they were, they're very interesting. Like it's, it's been really cool seeing how all the different scenarios uh, give you like a board state to explore. Um, and in that same vein, I'm looking forward to how this one goes. So here we go. Uh, murder at Excelsior Hotel, room 225 tonight, come alone. Investigators must solve the murder at the Excelsior Hotel in this special scenario for Arkham Horror, the card game with the clock ticking and danger around every corner. Can you figure out the truth behind this grisly murder and clear your name? Or will you be the next victim? The scenario can be played as a standalone or campaign side story, which is what we're doing. So we don't need to worry about the standalone uh, chaos bag rules. Um, here we go. We still carry over our weakness and trauma um, and rewards granted by playing the side story. We'll come back to the campaign. Uh, when it's played as a side story... Uh, use the same, yeah, everything, which means, actually, that we have a trauma token that we are going to need to put onto Jacqueline Fine, because um, how the last one went, <laughs> the fourth scenario, that is, so that's great. All right, um, patrol is an interesting uh, rule, which is just, uh, it basically seems, if I'm not mistaken, like hunter, but for enemies that aren't um, they're not looking for investigators, they're looking for particular areas on the board. And then the true culprit. Each copy of the true culprit is an agenda card with a different card template than most other agendas. The images each have doom thresholds which can be found to the right of their title instead of their normal position. Very interesting. Alright, uh, we have all these encounter sets. Alien murder, alien interference, dark rituals, excelsior management, sins of the past, violent experience just love the idea that like, management is just around and intruding on your investigation all right uh let's see intro one there have been reports of strange occurrences of arkham's excelsior hotel for over a month now disappearance bizarre sightings 
set enclosures, sometimes for days at a time, seemingly without warning. It's like something out of a ghost story, but you know better than to simply dismiss these rumors. Too many people have whispered about the Excelsior, and to make matters worse, it seems the stories have only grown more unsettling in the last week. It's time somebody looked into it at all. You've tried to go to the police, but the grizzled and world-weary Sergeant Monroe has dismissed you every time. You've been left to investigate on your own. Asking around at all the local hotspots yields no leads. Velma's Diner, Habe's Roadhouse, La Bella Luna. Each visit leaves you all with only more questions. That is, until today. While walking down Central Avenue in downtown, minding your own business, you bump into a man in a long trench coat. You begin to apologize, but he simply continues walking briskly away from you. It isn't until you return home that you find the note in your pocket, one that wasn't there before. I have answers. Room 225, tonight. Come alone. They're watching. Uncertain of what else you can do at this point, you begin making preparations to meet this mystery person. Since I am the only investigator, uh, we go to intro two. The Excelsior Hotel is busy tonight. Either the rumors haven't phased the guests, or the stories have given the hotel a new allure. Everything seems normal. Hotel staff carry baggage, uh, luggage, and cleaning supplies throughout the lobby and the main stairway. The man behind the front desk greets you with a curt nod and a thin smile. A uniformed security guard reads the latest Arkham advertiser in the corner. And yet, you can't get the note's final warning out of your mind. You stride quickly across the lobby and up the stairs, wondering if you should have let someone know where you were going. Was it wise to come alone? What if you're walking into a trap? You set your jaw and clench your fists as you stand in front of the blood-red door to room 225. And before you can second-guess yourself any further, you knock. There's no going back now. You sit in a chair in the suite's living room, watching as the man who slipped you the note paces about nervously. He rambles about secret meetings and watchful staff. The entire time, you find yourself glancing to the coffee table in front of you and the curved dagger that rests there. He pauses for a moment, pours himself a drink, and raises the glass to his lips with a shaky grip. He then pours a second drink and hands it to you. This is all going to sound crazy, he says, his voice little more than a whisper. He glances at every darting shadow and twitches at every creak the old building makes. I'm beginning to feel crazy, but there's too much going on here just to, to just ignore, and I've been a part of it long enough. You listen closely, but his words are starting to run together. His voice is ethereal and wispy, like wind at the end of a long tunnel. You blink rapidly. Your vision blurs. The next thing you know, you're on your feet. Your glass drops to the floor, and then... Proceed to set up. All right. Ooh, chills. There's some exciting little text there. Let's see about popping these guys open. And uh, get the cards we need. All right. Clean up a little later. Uh, just go ahead and clean this one, or pop this one open now, and set it to the side. Oh, you know what? I should turn. Uh, just go ahead and turn on some music. I got a long playlist for tonight for this. There we go. Okay. So not gonna try to stare too much at these. I'm just gonna. Keep it moving. Turn this down a little bit. It's kind of loud. Okay. It's set up. Uh, gather all the cards for a murder at the Excelsior Hotel encounter set. This is indicated by this icon. Okay. Um, okay, there it is. And we were looking for 53. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, okay, it's split between the two packs. I was, like, looking and I realized, oh, these have different, uh, uh, different, uh, things going on. Oh, okay, they're not exactly, like, stacked to get, uh, to get, okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, I, I think this is starting to make more sense. Ooh, like I, I, I'm looking at the card art as I'm going through and while I'm not like trying to look at any of this text here, this is, ooh, that art is, that is fantastic. Terrifying. <laughs> Here we go. I think this is the start of what we're looking for. First, our scenario guide. What well, are we going to be doing? Standard. Murder at the Excelsior Hotel. We'll just put that guy there. And then I think I have everything now. So let me just go ahead and count one. Yep, there we go. 53. Okay. And I think I'm set on the other cards, which I'm assuming I'm just going to be setting out of play. Uh, yep, they are set us out of play. Construct the act and agenda deck using only acts one and two and agendas one and two from the encounter set. Okay, so I just need one and two for the agendas. And then one and two for the acts. There we go. Set all 10 copies of the true culprit aside out of play, which I think is this card, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So we'll just go ahead and set those. Um, also, out of view. The lead investigator begins play with a bloodstained dagger story set, uh, story asset under his or her control. All right. So that's cool. I'll just put this over here in my um, play area, I guess. Which is what I've got going on. Um, Bloodstained Dagger. Fight. Get plus two melee. Okay. Exhaust and take horror. Fight. Deal plus one damage. If this attack defeats an enemy, draw a card. You feel your sins crawling on your back. I don't I don't think I want to use this. Um, but odds are I, I don't think I'm going to. Why are you not focusing? Come on. Thank you. Art's good. Art's very, very nice though. All right. Find each of the story assets from five set aside encounter sets and shuffle them together into a separate deck. This deck is called Leeds Deck. Place this deck near the scenario reference card. Okay, so I think, yeah, there's one, two, three, four. And my assumption is that each of these is like, it's got like a different um, uh, entity force. Uh, uh, malcontent, otherworldly presence behind it. Just looking at the the different art. Okay, and we'll put these uh, to the side. And we'll just put them over here above the act and near the scenario guide. Put the following locations into play: Room two two five, the suite balcony, the second floor hall, restaurant. Uh, and foyer. Lead investigator begins play in room 225. Everyone else is in the foyer. Set each other location out, out of play. So that's a bunch of different rooms, office basement, and the hotel roof. Okay. Just find some place to put these. Um, set the following cards aside. All three copies of Arkham Officer. Okay, who is a, uh, whew, a little toughy. Um, Sergeant Monroe, <laughs> not reading his text, but it says, two days until retirement, poor fella. And then, uh, what have you done, weakness? Shuffle the remainder encounter cards um, in, uh, to form the encounter deck. You are now ready to begin playing. Do not proceed to the following interlude section until you're instructed to do so. Which I'm assuming is just a later place in the manual. Okay, perfect. I'm going to put that over there. Set these cool cards aside. Set this box aside. And, uh, oh yeah, let's make sure that setup looks good. Alright, so restaurant can go over here. Let's see. Uh, second floor hall. Foyer. 
the room, and then the sweet balcony. Okay, I feel like this this board is gonna get uh, very very big very shortly. So let's go ahead and just shuffle these out. Hopefully this doesn't go too poorly, but we shall see. I've uh, had a, a bit of rough time with the uh, last scenario that was in um, Patsicarcosa, so hopefully uh, finally getting through that one will carry over, and this one will go well enough as well. Okay. Oh yeah, I never got my starting hand, so why don't we do that? Um, just go ahead and shuffle a couple times. I ended up picking... Uh, I, I sent back the clear sleeves that I had, got some clear dragon shields, and I've been very, very satisfied with them. They feel very nice. Not all weird and sharp like the other ones I, I uh, purchased. One more, for good measure. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. No, no, ah, okay, we got a couple of good ones here. Um... Azure Flame is nice because I know eventually I'm going to have to be attacking things and having the Arcane Initiative is also good um, for the purposes of filtering for spells because I know I'm definitely going to need Clairvoyance um, and some other things. I'm not worried about Prescient right now just because I don't need to get um, any spells soon. Robe of Endless Night could be useful but it is uh, pricey at 3 and I wouldn't mind just drawing it into again uh, into it. Okay, I have no idea what happened there. Uh, for some reason, my computer uh, crashed. But you know what? We're back up real quick, and we're back into the game. Uh, I did mulligan a few of my cards, and I ended up getting back a Voice of Raw, Crystal Pendulum, and another Scrying Mirror, so good stuff. Oh, my bitrate is unstable. That's interesting. Good to know. All right. We'll just go ahead and shovel this up, though, and we'll try to get in here. Okay, that should do it. Alright, room 225. The rug on the floor is soaked with blood. Broken glass litters the couch and coffee table in the living room. The window is open, a chill breeze flowing through the long curtains. Alright, let's get some tokens on here. Oh, okay, some things to uh, help clean up this crime scene. <laughs> Shroud 3 to get the clue. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think I'll be passing the book or melee test anytime soon. Um, but I can clean up the blood, which will be handy. All right. Let's just go ahead and look at these uh, agenda and act decks, though. See what's going on here. When you come to, you are standing over the man's body. You recoil immediately at the grisly sight. Multiple stab wounds perforate his chest. Blood spills onto the floor. What in the hell happened here? And why can't you remember a thing? If there's only one investigator in the game, the Ingenigans plus one threshold. Oh, nice. Nice. I only have, I have four instead of uh, three. And then the act deck says, what happened? Your head is spinning as you try to make a sense of the situation. Empty bottles are scattered about the room. Your hands tingle. The shadows seem to coil and writhe around you. Were you drugged? Or is this something else entirely? Spend one uh, clue per investigator as a group. Draw the top card of the leads deck. If the investigators control two lead assets advance. Oh, okay, good. So I, I can actually try to um, get some information here real quick. Uh, all right. Sheesh. Okay. Hmm. Let's 
not worried about drawing cards. I, since I have the Arcane Initiate for the start, I'm, I'm not super worried about it. Um, I think what we'll go ahead and do is we'll use uh, first one, first uh, first action, we'll use Voice of Raw spending Jacqueline's ability so that we can get uh, five tokens, trying to get um, some early resources here in the game. That way we won't have to worry about it too much. Okay. So we'll get five total. One, two, three, four. Oof, this is rough. Five, okay. So I gained one uh, from this, and then uh, these two make it uh, five total with the skulls. So not bad, but I've uh, had better, that's for sure. Okay, so that puts me up to ten resources, though, which is pretty nice. Let's play Crystal Pendulum for two. And then I think uh, this is versus three. Um, and we'll go ahead and use the ability to try and beat it. Um, I'll say uh, it succeeds. It succeeds by one. Let's see what we get. Oh, shoot, minus three, which means um, I'm at six, minus three, so zero. So this does not trigger, um, but I do succeed, and I do clean up the blood. So as a little reminder token that that did happen, we will just place a little cult person on here. Remember that we did that, and that's my turn. Um, so no enemies at this point in the game. Flip, untap, draw a card. Ritter Fates, pretty nice. Gain a resource. Alright. Jeez. Top of the round. And this goes up to four, not three. I gotta remember that. Draw a card. Oh boy. Blood on your hands. Test two. Increase the difficulty by one for each innocent enemy in the victory display. If you fail, take two horror. If you're at a crime scene, you must also choose and discard a card from your hand. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. This art is... Oh, that's so good. I love it. Uh, blood will have blood. All right. Um, I'm, I'm up oh, quite a bit. So I'll say, I'll say one again uh, using Crystal Pendulum. Um, do I want to burn... Jackie's ability for this. Uh, actually, you know what? No, I won't use this because I do have a scrying mirror, so I can use that ability to um, get more reliant card draw. So I won't. I won't burn the ability. I should be okay for this as long as I don't auto fail. Minus three. There we go. So we're good. Dang it. Okay. So we survive that. Let's. Uh, play some cards. It's expensive, but let's get out the scrying mirror. That's going to come with four secrets on it. Four uses. And I think we will burn one immediately to start the skill test to try and gather this clue. Um... So, and we will use Jacqueline's ability. Alright, so we're going to get three, or we're going to get one. Oh, this is, you know what, I should slow down also, because this is a book test. Um, well, I can still get the card draw even if I fail off of this, so as long as nothing too bad happens. Alright, so let's get three out. One, two, <gasps> ooh, Elder Sign. Oh my goodness, that was a good draw. All right, um, so let's. So we're at three, uh, and I do like three for three, and I do want to pass this. So I actually can't take either of those two, so I won't get the draw. But I will tap Crystal Pendulum to declare that I will get. Um, I will succeed by one because that'll boost me to four. So don't get the card draw off of Jackie's ability from. Uh, canceling or ignoring the Elder Sign token, but I do get it from the Crystal Pendulum. Uh, not what I wanted. Alright. If I cancel, ignore uh, the um, 
failure token, that's bad. Um, take a damage and a horror, but you know what? That's okay. I drew it and got it out of the way, and we do get the clue token. Um, I don't think I'm going to be do uh, reliably do anything else in this room. Um, so what was that? That was secret mirror, or yeah, scrying mirror. Investigate. We got the clue successfully. Um, I'm going to wait until this is about to pop to play the arcane initiate. And then we're going to start filtering through the deck for all the stuff that we want. Um, I think I'm just going to play... Uh, no, I don't really want to play Arbiter of Fates. Because, uh, like, I know at some point I'm going to run into uh, enemies. Hmm. I mean, uh, Azure Flame. I think I just want to move to the next area. The balcony affords a high vantage point over the rest of Arkham. Leaning over the rail, you mi your mind reels at the thought of falling from such a height. There we go. Get another clue. And now we can start. We can get some both leads from this. Okay, the action is choose a humanoid enemy at sweet balcony and test uh, strength or agility. If you succeed, take a direct horror and defeat the chosen enemy. <laughs> I'm assuming that means because I, I knock them and throw them over the ledge. <laughs> oh boy. If that enemy is elite deal two instead, this action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. <laughs> okay, I love that. There's um, a similar thing in the first Carcosa scenario where you can move directly from like the balcony to the theater um, by skipping the stairs and that will give you a damage, <laughs> which I, I think is really funny. Okay. Uh, draw a card. A good card this time. Ooh, a great card this time. Gain a resource. Now watch as it won't matter and I have to deal with like some other uh, stuff. Like an enemy or something this time. Alright. Driven to Madness. Revelation. If there are no humanoid enemies, uh, it gains Surge. Otherwise, attach to the nearest humanoid enemy. Attached enemy gets plus one fight, health, and evade. Attached enemy loses a loop. Investigators cannot parlay with the attached enemy. After attached enemy is baited, discard driven to madness. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, that's not terrible. I feel I feel like I can go ahead and let that through. Just gain surge and go to some other card. See what happens. Here we go. Attached to the nearest non-crime scene location. Attached location gains the crime scene trait and gains pl gets plus two shroud. When you successfully investigate attached, instead of discovering clues, discard the oh no I don't I don't want to deal with this I want to get this clue immediately and be done so we're gonna burn the ward protection to get rid of that. Uh, where'd I put it? Here it is. Ooh, this art is very nice. <laughs> like the cultist in the background is, uh, there, um, the Cthulhu is hovering over, uh, the cultist doing a murder. That's tight. Okay, so that's been dealt with. Um, and I think I want to get this other clue. So, let's go ahead and do that. Right? It's only Shroud 2. Um... Let's Scrying Mirror using Jacqueline's ability again. So we'll reveal three tokens. Actually, you know what? Let me... Let, oh, I just realized it's uh, to nearest non-crime scene location. So likely would be the second floor hall. Um, Maybe I don't worry too much about that one, actually, and I just let that slap onto the second floor hall, because I feel like there could be worse things that could happen. Because um, I'm playing this blind, I don't know how poorly or good it will go. Um, you know what? No, I'll, I'll stick with it. Because I feel like just having more crime scene stuff around is not great. Alright, uh, right, three tokens. One, two, three? Okay. Okay. Um, so these aren't bad. Cancel these two. Declare uh, one. 
for book for shroud to succeed. Gain this clue. This succeeds. Draw a card. Oh my god. <laughs> well, at least I'm getting both of the bad cards out of the way immediately. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend two actions to get rid of uh, Nihilism. Just get that out of the way immediately. Um, and that moves me to the end of uh, my turn. And I'm going to fish for some tokens to get rid of Dark Future. Looking for the Elder Sign. One, two, three, four, and one more. Skull. That won't do it. Oof, this is the rough one. I need to get my Dark Prophecy out so I can properly get rid of that. So, flip. Untap. Draw a card. Astral Travel is uh, alright. Not exactly what I was looking for, but I'll take it. Um, and this will be the turn that we get to play our uh, arcane initiate and start fishing for some more cards okay uh oh it's a hotel guest um spawn at nearest hall location which i think uh would be second floor hall yep um aloof patrol nearest crime scene at the end of the enemy phase uh if they are at the crime scene add one doom to the hotel guest parlay uh, test willpower or book three, or what is that, intellect, right? Intellect three to uh, get rid of them. <laughs> if you succeed, discard hotel guest. Uh, okay, so that is going to trigger no matter what I do, so I'm not worried about it for this round. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with my initial plan, which is arcane initiate for one. I love this, <laughs> the way this looks, it's just, just like a woman, uh, looking to the side there You're like, oh! and I'm assuming if they're discarded that their victory they don't go to the victory display right yeah it's defeated uh, they go there if it's just discarded I'm assuming they go back into this pile okay so arcane initiate for one let's uh, end while it doesn't matter for the effect of the game, she does get a Doom token. We're going to look at the top three, get a spell. Um, oh, actually, a Voice of Raw would be nice, so we can just have um, some more resources on hand. And I'm not going to be able to get to the hotel guest and um, prevent her from uh, doing anything. But I guess on the next turn I can go and try to stop her. Um, so why don't we spend my last two actions to spend clues and draw some leads. And figure out where we can go next from here. Okay. Uh, right. And that means I can also save Jacqueline's ability to pull seven for this. Um, which will be good. Okay. Um, yeah, let's spend ability, spend clue token. Uh, draw one of the leads, which is from the set-aside deck. Okay. I don't even know what slot you're supposed to fill. Tome of Rituals, Blasphemous Volume. Revelation, put into your play area. Force, when you are defeated, give control to another investigator. Oh, okay. A massive book, its pages ancient and withered. Uh, as you page through, a leaflet falls out. Picking it up, you see it contain a simple message. The Enclave awaits below. Cool. Um, and then let's spend another clue token. Grab another one of these bad boys. Manager's key. Oh, is the staff behind it? Stained by blood. Put into your play area. When you are defeated, give control over. A seemingly inconspicuous key, the word office etched on one side. Was the victim a member of the hotel staff? What diabolical, uh, diabolical scheme was in motion at the Excelsior? Neat. Gotta make a little more room down here. Uh, 
Here we go. So we got the manager's key and the tome of rituals for our two uh, leads. And we have two, so now we're going to advance uh, this deck. Gotta start somewhere. It isn't much, but it's all you've got. Your only real option now is to explore the rest of the hotel and see what you can learn. Put each of the set aside locations into play. Remove the remainder of the lead decks from leads deck from the game. Oh, okay, so these are just the two that we're gonna deal with for the rest of this scenario. I can get behind it. Uh, depending on which lead assets are in play, shuffle six cards into the encounter deck as follows, along with the encounter discard pile. Um, we don't have alien device. Uh, we have manager's key. Shuffle the three set aside copies of hotel security into the deck. Okay, which I think are from over here. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. These. <laughs> These hotel security guards don't look especially friendly. I think I think now is probably a good time next turn to go ahead and just play that Azure Flame. Um, so these three are gonna go. Um, I'll, I'm just distracted looking at the rest of these cards. I'll look at them later. Uh, we have Tome of Rituals, which means shuffle three set aside copies of Cultist of the Enclave. Okay. Okay, here we go. We have Cultist of the Enclave, who is only at two health, as opposed to the security guys who are at three, which I'm happy with. All right, cool. Let's make sure I do all this right. Uh, put each of the set-aside locations into play. Remove the remainder of the leads deck from the game. Okay, so we just have to put these other locations into play. Starting with our hotel roof, uh, which is got a plus symbol, so we can put it up here. Then we have room 212, which connects to the second floor hall as well. Oh gosh, it's getting super crowded here. Um, 212, 212, 212 is... Uh, we could just put it here and somewhere in this mess. <laughs> oh geez. Uh, we have tomb 245, which also connects to the second floor hall. The office, which connects to the foyer. And what's this other one? Oh, the basement. And the basement connects to the foyer as well. And whatever this moon icon oh the office okay so we're gonna do a little rearranging here to try and make things uh, easier to navigate so foyer and then basement and office and then these other rooms go here and I clearly do not have enough space for this scenario <laughs> all right my hand of cards will go over here and then I'm just gonna try to shuffle these enemies in here uh, as best as I can and hopefully just not have to run into them uh, anytime soon Because uh, I don't have an Azure Flame out. An Azure Flame would be great. So because these kind of just are taking up space, I'm just going to put them at the top, and we'll just remember that I have them there, the manager's key, and the uh, uh, tome of rituals. Actually, where can I put? Can I put it over here? Is that okay? That's okay. They can they can be over there. <sighs> All right. Um, what am I looking for? Here we go. 
following leads, Act 2A. Thanks to the leads you discovered in the suite, you're fairly sure whoever framed you still is still in the hotel. The only real question is where you find this person. Uh, looking at the leads you've found, you feel like the answer uh, answers are right in front of you. Learn more about your leads by placing clues on them, using abilities on some locations. The more clues, the better. At the end of the round, you may choose it to advance a lead, it, or advance if each lead has at least one per investigator. Hint, if you wish to present this evidence to the police, you may wish to have at least two clues per investigator on each asset instead. I pr probably won't go to the cops. Okay, so that's me. Um, end of my turn. Gonna try and get rid of Dark Future using Jacqueline's ability to help. Uh, and it's gonna be revealing seven tokens here. You're still tapped. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh, this is not looking good. Six, seven. No. Dang, that was a lot. All right. Give this a good shuffle around so that the next time I try to pick, maybe um, I'll have a little more luck. Okay. Enemy phase. So we have the hotel guest, um, and they move to the nearest crime scene, and all of these are equal, so I'm just going to say it's going to move in here, that way I can uh, bump into him and discard on the next uh, turn, hopefully. Um, they are at a crime scene, so we do add uh, one doom to them. I will just parlay with them next round, and that should help. Alright, uh, all done. Untap, draw a card. Nice, just in time, another ward of protection. Okay, looking good. So, started the round. Uh, this goes up to <laughs> by one and then hits six. So, uh, that's done. And we advance the agenda deck now. Arousing suspicions. As you retrace your steps to make sense of the situation, there is a pounding on the door to the suite. This is the police, a stern voice calls out. We've gotten reports of a disturbance. Open up. Put the set-aside Sergeant Moreau into play in the foyer. Okay. <laughs> I just realized he has, like... So he has a statue, uh, a, a Cthulhu statue, just sitting on his desk. Like, he knows about this stuff. He knows about this nonsense. <laughs> Great. Uh, spawn want to set aside Arkham Horror at the uh, enemy at the second floor hall. Great. And their thing is also a loop patrol. Uh, move one clue. At the end of the enemy phase, move one clue to Arkham Officer from its location, flipping to its doom side. Uh, test three. If you succeed, either automatically evade or flip one of its uh, doom to a clue side and take control of it. Oh, that's neat. And a good way for me to evade. Just talk my way out of it. Um, if there are three, spawn another. Okay. Um, then shuffle each other set aside Arkham Officer enemy into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. Oh boy. Okay, so everything is going back in. The lead investigator draws the set aside. What have you done, weakness? For each of the following circumstances, which is true, place one clue on room 225 from the token blank and place one doom on an Arkham Officer. Okay, so first off, I get this card, and then these also get shuffled, along with the discard pile, into uh, the encounter deck. Oh boy, I can sh I can choose to shuffle what have you done into my deck in order to get rid of it. So I, I better go get a sleeve because I'm I'm gonna do that immediately. Oh boy, twelve. Okay, so we got a lot of time at least before the next one um will advance. But uh, the sooner I advance it, the better I imagine.
Okay, that's probably enough uh, shuffling. Okay, um, set aside, lead investigator draws the set aside, what have you done? Yeah, so this is going to be in my, th uh, my thread area, or my, yeah, for each of the following, which is true, place one clue from the token make on room 225, which is the one that I'm in. Place one doom on an Arkham officer. Oh, wow, okay, so for every one that I, I fix, I get another clue. Uh, but then I get a doom on the uh, Arkham officer. That's ooh, that's really neat. So I definitely will have to go chatting up with him to try and prevent that from happening. Okay. Uh, special investigation. You're not the only one interested in the strange events at the Excelsior Hotel tonight, and the police are on to you. You're still not sure what happened, um, or if it could happen again. After investigator at the same location as a ready police enemy discovers one or more clues on that location or deals damage to a human enemy... Um, oh, okay, so it's it's to mitigate me from just attacking innocent people. <laughs> um, okay, uh, real quick, I'm gonna take a, a, a B ride back, and then we'll get this going. All right, we're back. I got a sleeve for uh, what have you done? I'm just gonna slap that guy in there. Boom. <clears throat> Can get rid of this reminder since I don't think we're gonna need it anymore. Uh, all right. I think I just draw a card. See what happens. Um, if there are no humanoid, oh, there are definitely are. Um. Nearest humanoid enemy readies, moves one location at a time until it reaches your location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. Ugh, great. That's not terrible is the thing. Like, I, I'm fine taking, like, A damage. Because then I'm also able to get rid of the hotel guest, and I can, um, take care of this. Like, I, I have, I don't have to move in order to take care of them, which is nice. All right. So they move over here, and then they make an immediate attack, dealing me one um, physical damage. So now I'm at two with Jackie. Great. Out of a total of six, because I don't want to be rid of the Arcan Initiate yet, who I will tap at the end of this phase to look for a spell. I get Clairvoyance and or Ineffable Truth. I'm going to get Clairvoyance, because I know I'm going to have to hoover up these clues as fast as I can. Um prevent anything terrible from happening. I guess I could go to the cops. But then I would need two per. Let me check the condition of this for, for this again. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, so I need either four or two clues. And I feel like having four might be helpful, especially because Monroe has a lot of abilities, or a lot of health on him, I should say. Okay, so this person's engaged with me, um, and I took uh, a damage. <sighs> Alright, start of my turn. So first off, we're going to parlay. Jeez. Ugh! And do I have anything I want to commit to do this? No, I, I like all the car or the things I have now. I will not use Jackie's ability because um, I can't even cancel or ignore anything because of Dark Future. So let's just see what I find. I'm at six versus three. Zero. Perfect. So they are discarded. <laughs> so I like the idea that they just rush into the room just start trying to attack me after looking at the violence scene and then uh, I can convince them to leave like you should you should get out of here it's it's terrible here um, we're gonna put what have you done um, oh that's right um, I have to discard a card at random for my hand Woo, that's that's rough in that case should I undo the no, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit. Hopefully, I just don't have to discard anything too bad. Arbiter of Fates, not the, not the like card I would want to get rid of. But considering the fact that I have a lot of spells, I'd rather keep five spells. In fact, I think that's like the best option. So you are just gonna go into my deck, and I'm hoping I'm never going to see you again. Whew. that's a rough one. <laughs> okay. So that's done. So I think I'm gonna go into the next room. Man, you know what? Cleaning up a bunch of the stuff here is actually super useful because then it means you're able to um, uh, just go talk to the officer outside and gain a bunch of clue tokens right from the go uh, the get go. That's really handy. All right. Shuffled. Uh, succinctly, I think. So that was Parlay. And then... <sighs> Gotta play Azure Flame. Because um, I know that's this is going to come in handy. Sooner rather than later. So that takes me down to... Four. And it comes with... Four charges. And then I feel like I want to spend the other four just to put down um, Clairvoyance so that on the next turn I can start looking for clues um, starting here in room 225. And while I don't, like, it means I'm going to go broke, I think I'd rather have that. Okay. Clairvoyance has three abilities, I think. Or three uses, I should say. Yeah, three. Alright, so that's my turn. Okay. Okay, and the officer, he does... He is aloof. He has patrol. Um, Sergeant Moreau hangs out in the foyer, it looks like. Um... So, the Arkham Officer goes into the crime scene because it has the most clues. Move one clue, uh, flipping to its doom side. Oh, okay, so it goes on to him. In that case, I, I don't think I want to play this quite yet because I don't uh, need it then. So, let me gain that four back. Come here. If I read the card, I would understand how the card works. So clear your points back in hand, and then in that case for last action, I think I just want to play um, Voice of Nah, Voice of Rod just to gain one, and then no oh, shoot, you know I don't know. This is rough. It feels like a rough spot. Like I don't really know what I want to do, but um, I think maybe I draw a card. Uh, okay. Man in the Pallid Mask, who I'm not especially ecstatic about running into, but that's fine. 
um, location furthest from all investigators, which I imagine is probably the office or the basement, because that would be furthest. Because the roof connects to the restaurant, so that'd be one, uh, two, three, or one, two, three to the foyer. I'll put him on the, the hotel roof. I feel like that's thematically appropriate for him to be up there. So, one thing, uh, this is a slight spoiler, but not entirely, because it's just within the first scenario. You just run into uh, this guy um, in the curtain call scenario for Carcosa, and he has been difficult to deal with, just because in order to easily get rid of him, yeah, I have to investigate, and Jacqueline's investigate is three. So it's, <laughs> I don't really have the cards usually to deal with him. Um, all right, he goes there, the Arkham officer intruded in, so now we have two doom, but I think we're going to be able to successfully get rid of that soon. Um, Burn Jacqueline finds ability as well, because I need to dig for this Elder Sign token. Come on, come on, come. Camera, I need you to fix yourself. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ugh, this is the worst. Stays on board for another turn. I've had uh, games where this happens, where Jacqueline finds um, weakness just stays on the board for a super long amount of time. Untap, untap. Okay. Um, flip over. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Oh, finally. Dark Prophecy. Okay, this is the turn that we use this, and we're going to get rid of um, the uh, Dark Future, because we're going to burn it to reveal five instead of one. So that will be uh, nine tokens and then 11 with Jacqueline Pine. We're, we're done, this this is it, it's finally over. Okay, Doom Token onto the Special Investigation. Um, does not advance, but we draw a card. Um, I, oof. Oh, this one's, this one's rough. Um, if there are no humanoid enemies, it's Surge, but there is a humanoid enemy. It's Arkham Officer. Um, plus one fight, plus one health, plus one evade. Ugh. Uh, I can't parlay. I think, yeah, I have to burn the other Board of Protection. Um, because I, I super need that to not happen. So I can get in here, sweet talk him, and then get his uh, clue tokens. And then run around, get some other clue tokens. Like that, that will be ideal. Finally, get out of this <laughs> this sweet area and explore the rest of the hotel. Okay, so not too bad. So let's move. And then we're gonna try to uh, parlay uh, with the Arkham officer. And if I'm not mistaken, I don't. And what I do need is a lunch vest. I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't need to um, be engaged to parlay. Okay. Uh, yep. I think it's only like attacking, uh, or not even that, but no, I don't, I don't need that for um, that ability. So let's go ahead and Arkham Officer. Oh, actually, Arcane Initiate, just to burn it first. Look for top three, gain a nice spell. Hypnotic Gaze will do nicely. So first action is to move into the back into the hall. I'm gonna talk to our friend, the Arkham Officer. And we're going to burn another use of the Scrying Mirror to reveal tokens first. We're at six versus three. We're just going to reveal one off of this. And oh my god, Elder Sign token. Cool. So that's plus one. So that um, is going to be uh, plus four. Anyway, I use Crystal Pendulum to declare the appropriate number to draw a card. And I get Prescient, which is nice. So I gain one of these. And now we're at one clue. 
and I think I'm just going to do it again. The Elder Sign token has been evading me this entire game to get rid of Dark Future, and now it finally decides to show up. Um, and I'm not worried about uh, any of these negative tokens I could run into, because I really want Jacqueline's ability for uh, Dark Future, so I'm just going to um, do it and hope for the best. Elder Sign again. <laughs> I promise I was not like looking uh like cheating and holding my hand there in the bag to get it. Um that's so that's that's uh what was three doom is back to one and I have the tokens. I do love the idea that the Arkham officer walks in here and then I'm just hanging out from the, the balcony and come in and can uh I guess um chat him into believing that I'm not um at fault here. Okay. Oh, but actually, you know what? I think I want to burn Prescient anyway. Um, oh, no, right. I have to declare what it would be. Um, so I don't think... I'm hopefully going to be able to save Prescient and um, commit it next turn with the Scrying Mirror so I can get some of these Wards of Protection back. Okay. Here we go, though, chat. We are going to finally be rid of Dark Future. So, um, end of my turn. I am going to be revealing tokens to get rid of that, and I, I'll i reveal it on the fifth token, um, because I might I might look out here. So, uh, let me just uh, check. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, so on the fifth one, I will pay one to play Dark Prophecy. So now I will reveal another five. One, two, three, four. Five. Oh my gosh! And then Jackie's ability. One more, and then... oh my god, it has to be in here. <laughs> oh my god! I I revealed so many tokens, and none of them are the single one that I need in order to get rid of Dark Future. That is a major bummer. Great. All right. Flip back up. Untap all of this, draw a card, another arcane initiate, and gain a resource. Yikes. Wow, that's a that's a I'm gonna have to sit down and just let that one sink in. Yikes. Okay. <sighs> cool. Top of the round. This gains two. <laughs> Blood on your hands. Okay, this one I should be able to pass easily. Oh, wait, no, um, yeah, alright, I was looking over to Driven to Madness thinking I was running into that one again. Um, but I'm not worried about, um, blood on your hands. Uh, minus two, oh yeah, easy, 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 easy. So I think I'm just gonna walk out of here on this turn, leaving our nice officer here, and let's go into the second floor hall. Gets a clue. After you enter, you may immediately move to a connecting location. If you do, reveal a random token. And if uh, a symbol is revealed, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Yeah. Okay. Let's not worry about that. Instead, let's go ahead. And uh, if it's just book at two... Uh, it's very expensive to do it, but I think we're just going to go ahead and burn these four to gain clairvoyance with, uh, what is it, three? Yep, and then we'll spend one to go ahead and see if we can't... Uh, I'm going to move some of these extra tokens I have here at the top to the side. Um, anyway, try to, try to find this. Okay. Uh, pick up this clue, I should say, using Clairvoyance's ability. So, plus one. Excellent. So that's a super big number. 
Oh my god. Okay. So I'll gain this. I like the idea also that I have the bloodstained dagger and the officer looks and is like, oh, that, that's fine, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> okay. And thankfully, it means he's not going to follow through and there's no clues for him to come and get. So it was... Um, let's see if I remember. Move, play clairvoyance, and then investigate the second floor hall. Which, uh... Get some real shining vibes off of this hallway. Very spooky looking. And especially the, and that doorway opening at the end is very creepy. Okay, uh, Arkham Officer doesn't move for his patrol because there's no place with clues for him to worry about looking into. Um, I think I want to go to the restaurant next probably and then the roof. Um, see if I can't get the Man in the Pallet mask out of here even if it means I have to shoot him. Oh, I did not use Arcane Initiate like I should have, so let me rectify that real quick. Oh, I won too many cards. Um, not a spell, not a spell, not a spell. End of my turn, try to reveal um, her dark future, and hopefully get the other sign. For, for real this time. Alright, one, two, three, four, ugh, one more. Or actually, no, I'll burn Jacqueline's ability to get seven. Alright, I feel three in my hand. Nope. It'll be here for a whole nother round. Great. Draw a card. Another clairvoyance, and we'll gain a resource. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, top of the round, this gains another doom token. And I need to flip this. Another blood on my hands. Thankfully, there's no innocent enemies in the victory display. Uh, minus two. Oh, yeah. Super handle that. That's not hard at all. Uh, the fact that these are all next to each other, though, makes me very nervous about what I'll run into next. Um, Arcane Initiate. Um, I do. I technically get a spell. I do get Ineffable Truth. Which is still nice, being able to um, thin my deck out like this. I love how the running this as a side quest with the campaign theming means that like the um the man in the pallet mask is just continuing to haunt me in all the various locations that I visit. It's a lot of fun. Um even if he's just going to be sitting there on the roof not being interacted with <laughs> for most of this um playthrough. 2 3 4 5 6 7. Okay. <sighs> um Yeah, I think we want to go to the restaurant. Or no, how do we get to the hotel roof? Is the hotel roof just from the second hall? Oh, in that case, this was mistakenly put somewhere. Um, one, because I could do one, two, uh, three, and then four would be, yeah, because I was over here. One, two, basement or office would be more appropriate. Um, so we'll just, <laughs> we'll put the man in the pallet mask in the basement. Screw that guy. Um... And then I think, because there's nowhere else that goes around uh, for here, we'll go to the hotel roof. Wind whips across the flat, open roof as clouds roll in overhead. Uh, oh, a victory one. Nice. And then, uh, let's see, I can use this. Oh, I can do an evade or uh, melee to move successfully into one of the rooms, which is pretty nice. And then test three, if I succeed, move any number of clues to the alien device, which... I do not have. So, that's that's fine, though. Uh, let's hoover this clue up. 
and I, I can't immediately reach for it. But I'm pretty sure this clairvoyance will come through for us. Uh, let's see, I'm at six. Minus three, yep, that'll do it. So now I have all the clues that I need. Um, and I need to pick... I'm, I'm pretty sure the office is where I need to go to put clues on the manager's key. And then as far as the Tome of Rituals, I don't know if that's the basement or... Um, hmm. Oh, and the office is locked anyway. I need the manager's key. Um, but I can't attempt uh, evade in order to succeed. So I think I, I can I can try to do that. I have enough uh, cards or like icons for it between everything if it comes to that. So I think we'll just go ahead and visit the restaurant next. So that was move, investigate, and then we'll move um, back down here. Victory point is nice. We are starting to cover how much it actually costs to uh, go here in the first place to play the side quest, which is three points. All right, seven again. One, two, three, four, five. Oh my God. Six. And then last one. Oh, finally. <laughs> Seven. Get rid of Dark Future. Jeez. Alright. You don't go anywhere because there's no clues. Um, no enemies in play. I flip over, draw a card, another scrying mirror. Perfect. So I can start burning this other one that I have. And then two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in hand. Nice. Um, okay. Doom token. We're getting there, all right. Draw a card. It's an enemy. Uh, nearest empty location. A hunter retaliate if at least there's at least one guest enemy in play hotel security loses hunter and gains um, patrol nearest location with a guest enemy okay whatever it is it's clearly no longer human um, I have a lot of options for nearest empty locations so I think I'll just throw him onto the roof and that'll be it there are no guest enemies so you can just go there that's fine oh boy but uh, when he comes looking for me to fight, I will be ready. So let's start moving around, try to get these things going. Okay. Um, let's go to the restaurant. The white tablecloths seem almost too clean. As you glance through the menu, the words within are entirely unintelligible. Upon second glance, however, everything seems normal. Ooh, four shroud with a clue. Spend two resources. Uh, place an order while enduring the withering glares, eh, glares of the entire wait staff. At the end of the turn, if you are still there, you may take one horror and heal three damage. Oh, nice. If each location in play is revealed and there are no clues on in play, place a clue on restaurant. Oh, okay. So while I went there and I revealed it, this uh, location isn't really going to help me out, which is a bummer. So I think now we just want to go to... Um, probably the foyer. Oh, this flipped over on accident. Put that back. Um, yeah, probably the foyer is where we want to go. Oh, actually, I can use this. I can, I can use that ability. So let's go one, two, we're going back, and we're going to go ahead and use the ability, um, for second floor hall. And because we are back to normal with Jackie Fine, don't have to worry about, um, then uh, negative react, or we can cancel again because Dark Future is offline. So perfect, we can cancel these icons, getting rid of them, revealing the zero. Uh, so we don't have the encounter at the top of the deck and we can just immediately move um, to the foyer. Um, it's a grand hall of polished tile and sweeping stairs. Guests and staff move through the vast room in an almost dreamlike state. Or is that just your imagination? Okay, we get a clue token on it. Shroud 2. Resigned. <laughs> you flee the scene of the crime. Um, 
when you attempt to move out of the foyer uh, there's at least one guest enemy here test uh, x where x is the number of guest enemies if you fail you must spend one additional action to move out of the foyer okay thankfully there's no guests there's just sergeant moreau here in the foyer um And I don't have the manager's key, but I feel like I really need to get into the office to move these tokens to the, um, oh yeah, no, I do have the manager's key, oh my goodness. <laughs> I just, I don't know why I didn't realize, I forgot. That's what I have. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move into the office. Okay, nice, there's two clues here. Test zero. For each point you succeed, you may move one clue uh, by an investigator into the manager's key if it's in play. Perfect. I kind of want to also clean up that spot just so I can get another victory point. So, something to consider. But it was one, two to move back, and then we managed to get into the foyer easily, and then three. So that's uh, Jackie's turn. This go around. And we did burn uh, Azure, or Arcane Initiate, so that untaps. Um, Arkham Officer does in fact move. Uh, and then this guy moves Hunter uh, retaliate so I guess he's just going to come down the hall looking for me which I'm not super excited about so untap on flip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ugh, I'm at 8 cards I just realized um, which I'm not super hype about draw a card Gain a resource. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, got to discard one. I feel like astral travel will probably come in handy, and I'm not worried about having to gain clues anymore, just because we're on the last act of the deck. So I'll get rid of clairvoyance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. <sighs> we're back at the top. Five. Draw a card. Oh. Oh well, Mr. Trombley, who has a <laughs> victory point of one, which makes me believe that he's not an instant humanoid staff. He spawns in the foyer. Hunter, after he enters play, immediately resolve the hunter and patrol keywords on each other staff enemy in play. Oh no! The concierge regards you with a feverish, maddened expression. Did you request a wake-up call? So he'll go here. And then this guy also resolves and goes here. Great. Oh boy. Oh lord, they come in. <laughs> Oof. Just both of them at the same time, which I'm not excited about. I have the hypnotic gaze, which can come in handy for dealing with them. But, uh, like, they're both coming for me at the same time oh boy okay do I just teleport away to try and um, get them to run towards or do I have to suck it up and eventually just kill them I think I might I might have to let's see if I can find the other Azure flame uh, looking around not this time It is in here, though, that's for sure. And I don't know where the tokens went. Okay, there they are. So I have all four tokens of the Azure Flame. Uh, so I can deal with these guys fairly handedly. Okay. I need to get to an area to start putting tokens onto um, the Tome uh, of Rituals. <sighs> okay. Alright, so I'm at top of, my top of the round for me. I think I... Jeez. This is a rough spot. Okay. Ooh. 
Ooh, okay. So one thing I have to consider for interaction is Sergeant Moore, when he has dealt any amount of damage or horror, exhaust him, deal that much damage to a non-innocent enemy at this location. Any investigator may trigger this ability. So I could use that to probably get rid of the hotel security um, and Mr. Trombley pretty quickly. Yeah, I want to deal with them now while I can have um, Sergeant Monroe help out. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I think I'm going to move back here, which means that they are going to actually become engaged with me here in the foyer. And then I'm going to try to take some shots. Let's go one Azure Flame uh, using the Scrying Mirror. Or, sorry, yeah, one Azure Flame using the Scrying Mirror to reveal tokens first. Plus one, minus three, and the tablet. So we'll cancel the tablet and that. Actually, no, I want I want the minus three, um, because plus one will give me a damage, and I I don't want the damage. All right, so that will put me down to three. Um, so then I'll commit prescient to put me to zero. Declare crystal pendrium at zero, which will succeed. And I'll say that it is a odd number, which means Ward of Protection is going to come back to my hand. And that means I'm going to deal two damage to Mr. Trombley. And then I think I'm going to try to burn another one to attack the hotel security. And this one is no abilities, it's just one draw. Um, so at six, do I have anything I would like to get rid of? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to have nine cards. Uh, I'm going to play the ritual candles. Um, I think. Okay, we have this, uh, minus guest, there's zero guest, so I super succeed, and this guy will also take two damage. Okay, looking pretty good. Eight. All right, this goes back in the bag. Okay, so that's my turn. Now I move on to the enemy phase. So Arkham Officer will move... Um, to the closest location with things. I'm gonna have a move more towards to me so I can flip the clue off of him. I think I think that's what I wanna do on my next turn. Um, okay, so Mr. Trombley, um, he is going to attack me. Um, and I think I let that swing because then I can put two damage and a horror onto Sergeant Monroe. And then I'm going to deal that much de uh, damage to an enemy at the location, which means Mr. Trombley is defeated and he is thrown into the victory display. Um, and then the hotel security is going to attack me as well. Um, and I don't want this to happen and I'd rather he die from his own ability. So I burned um, this uh, hypnotic gaze this time. And we're looking for a symbol. And I don't have any more Dark Prophecies in hand. Two, three, four, five, six. I do have a Dark Prophecy in hand. And I think I want to burn it. Because that way I can just guarantee it's going to happen. Because I already used Jacqueline Fine's ability earlier. And... 
All right, one, two, three, four, five. Got a tablet, so he dies. Thankfully. Whew. That was a close turn, that's for sure. And um, <laughs> unfortunately, Sergeant Moreau got really beat up. <laughs> All right, we flip back, uh, untap everything. Draw a card. Another Azure Flame. Nice. I'm going to probably override this Clairvoyance as soon as I run back to the office and use it. Gain a resource. Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. We are okay. And this goes up to six, so it is now halfway where it is at. Um, top of the deck. God, another... Oh, it's another Arkham police officer. Okay, great. Um, nearest location with clues. Um, which, I guess, you know what? Is the office. So I need to... Oh, boy. So I need to parlay with the Arkham officer. And then I need to come here. And I need to, uh, need to hooper up these clues. So this Arkham officer also does nothing. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I explored really fast, and now they are just going around doing all the things that I don't need them to do right now. Alright. And that's at the end of the enemy phase. Thankfully, it's not when they spawn, like, the Zealots. Um, in some of the Zealots in the Carcosa campaign, where they just will pop and immediately get it. Okay. So, no time for fancy stuff. Parlay. Spending three. Or, um, and I think I want to spend... No, I, it's at three, and I'm at six, so I should be able to handle this uh, just fine. Um, let's see. Maybe I should. Uh, let's see, do I have anything super cool? Do it. No, I think I just go for it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, just barely. Minus one. So I'll take that clue. Just keep it away from him. <laughs> and then I move back into the office. And I'm going to try to hoover up these two clues with the last clairvoyance uh, charge that I have. Uh, using Jackie's ability this time because I want to be sure that I succeed. So that's three tokens. Oh boy. Alright. So that's minus three. Okay, I beat the shroud with plus one. There's no guest here. And I or I can cancel the auto fail. Alright. So I get these clue tokens. <laughs> And that's my turn. Great. Whew. Prevented Doom from accumulating super quickly there, which I'm happy about. But the issue then is now I need to figure out where I can put uh, things for the Tome of Rituals. Because um, I'm running out of time. Okay. Oh, right. And uh, Arcane Initiate. One, two, three. No spells. Okay, um, oh, I forgot to do Crystal Pendulum, which it's, you know, that's on me. All right, um, Arkham Officer will move to the hall, and then this Arkham Officer will move to the foyer, because they are looking for them clues. There's only one at the moment, which is good. Um, then I flip over, Arkham Initiative untaps, everything untaps, I draw a card, Virtual Candles, eight cards, gain a resource. Get another Doom. We're at seven now. Oof, getting close here. Draw a card. Oh, this one's easy. I can handle this, no problem. Uh, plus one. Nice. All right, so let's double test to put... Uh, this is with book. To put clues... Oh, you know what? Actually, before we even... No, I don't have the resources to do that. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, we just have to try our best to succeed on doing book. So, do I have anything I want to pitch that I know I'm not going to use anytime soon? Arguably, the Scrying Mirror is worth playing, so I don't know. 
Um, I'll burn Jackie's ability for this first one. Okay. Uh, so, succeed. Easy enough. To move a clue to the manager's key. And then, gonna do it again. I'll use the pendulum, crystal, uh, crystal pendulum, to declare uh, zero as my score. And, you know what? I get zero. <laughs> nice. And now that's fully loaded. Um, I succeeded. I get to draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I will not use Arcane Initiate because now I'm just going to have to start burning cards that I don't especially want to. Um, but I do need resources and I need them bad. So I'm going to... Oh no, I used Jackie's ability earlier on, so I should save that one for next round. Okay, so I think in that case I'm just going to move back to the foyer, and that'll be it. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'll figure out where my card is. I flip it back over. Oh, I didn't flip it in the first place. That's fine. Draw card. Gain a resource. Not going to need a crystal pendulum. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm not gonna need like scrying mirror is nice, so I feel like I should keep it. I'm I'm not gonna need another arcane initiative, that's for sure. Um, as much as the soak is nice. Okay. Um. Go up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got four turns left to try and get this, so I need to figure out where the next location I need to go is. Um, and I'm going to try the basement next, because I, I feel like that might be a safe bet. Spawn, basement, hunter, that's where I need to go. <laughs> Cultists of the Enclave. After they attack, reveal a token from the Chaos Bag. Um, if it's a symbol, place a doom on the agenda. Alright. Well, you know what? That's where we're going next. So, let's just go ahead and head on down there. Into the basement. Uh, the hum of machinery and the dim lighting make your hair stand on end. Exploring the basement will be difficult. Amidst the din, you think you hear footsteps echoing on your own, just a few paces behind. Um, test 1. If you succeed, move a humanoid enemy at any location toward the basement. After you defeat an enemy in the basement, move any number of clues controlled by investigators uh, to here. Uh, to the Tome of Rituals. Oh, fantastic! Because we're immediately going to uh, kill this cultist. <laughs> All right, so we move to the basement. It has a clue on it per investigator with Shroud 4, which I'm not uh, worried about. Um, I'm glad I did the clue sniffing earlier. So let's move. Uh, use Azure Flame, and you know we are using Jackie's ability for this one for sure. Um, one, two, three. Oh. I revealed one too many, so we'll use the tablet, because it's on top and I can see it, and not the other tablet, which is underneath it. Uh, we'll cancel for the minus one. That's fine. What's important is that the cultist dies, um, and then we can move two clues onto the Tome of Rituals. And while I can't advance the act deck right now, um, actually, it can be as many as I want, right? Um... I think I just want to move all of them. Choose to advance. Because I'm not going to be using them for anything else, I think. <sighs> you may wish to have at least two on each lead instead. Yeah, I'm going to put five on there. Alright, and we could advance. Um, if each lead... Has at least one. Okay. So I think we're good to advance here um, at the end of the round. But I think I'm going to play. Hmm. We've got a couple options. No, we're playing the other Azure Flame. Just want to be sure that I'm going to have charges to kill whatever is going to inevitably show up. One, two, three, four. Okay. So it was move, uh, shoot the cultist uh, that was down here, and then play Azure Flame for my second spell. Five, six, seven. 
And I'm at seven, so I should be good. I don't need to burn Arcane Initiate for uh, an ability. It is the end of the round. Um, oh, wait, no. So you move here, and you're going to flip it onto you, and then you would have moved there. Sergeant Monroe, still there. Um, so I think we're going to we're gonna see what's here on the other side of the following leads. Um, at the end of the round, you may choose to advance if each lead asset has at least one. If you wish to present this, you may wish to have at least two on each lead asset instead. Um, all right, I, th I think we're going to advance because I'm, I'm running out of time here because <laughs> I'm at nine now. Ooh, read scenario interlude, the truth on page 10 of the rules booklet. I completely forgot that there's more going on here. Oh, man. All right. Ooh, this is a thick book. Okay. Okay. The truth. Uh, one, the investigation is halted by Sergeant Monroe. The very same police sergeant who had spurned your earlier warnings about the Excelsior Hotel. He is clearly exasperated by all the strange happenings in the building and demands answers. Now listen here, he says. Uh, his hand twitching towards his holstered and gunned. I'm a reasonable man, but you're looking mighty suspicious. You better tell me everything that's going on right now, you understand? Or are you going to take a one-way trip straight to the big house? Uh, we will tell him the truth. You explain everything to Sergeant Monroe from the beginning. The rumors, the note, the murder. The more you explain, the more you realize how crazy it sounds. But you know it's the truth. You know you're innocent. But do you have the evidence to back it up? Sergeant Monroe will only believe you if you collect enough evidence and did not try to cover up your involvement. If all the following circumstances are true... Uh... Oh! Oh no! Uh... Otherwise, skip to the truth four. Oh no, I did, I did in fact clean up the blood. That's no good. Let's see. No, no, I don't believe you, the man says, unholstering the weapon. None of this checks out. You're coming with me, pal. You can sing uh, your story down at the station. You raise your hands, and he starts ushering you out of the room where there is a tremendous crash from another part of the hotel. The entire building shakes to its foundations, and you hear your guests uh, screaming, What in the hell? He locks the door. He looks to the door, then to you. Stay put, he warns, or I swear. Next time I see you, you're getting cuffed. He runs off to investigate the noise, mumbling about how he's getting too old for this job. Remember that the police don't believe you. Remove Sergeant Monroe from the game. Search the encounter deck discard pile and all uh, for the Arkham officer and remove them from the game. Shovel the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and skip to truth seven. Ooh boy. All right, that'll be uh. Oh, that's gonna be something. Dang. Okay, so if you do any of the things in room two two five, uh, oof, that's rough. All right, well, uh, let's let's remove them from the game. Arkham Officer, which I'm assuming means his Doom token goes away, but I have a feeling it, it's not going to matter. Sergeant Monroe leaves, and then we need the last of the cops out as well. Okay, there we go. I, I have a feeling we're in for a rough time here. Okay. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Alright, so this goes back in. Alright. So, I don't have a lot of room here, so I'm just gonna go do, like, a pile shuffle uh, off to the side here real quick. I should do it. Um, and then we skip to truth seven, the truth seven. 
man, this scenario is phenomenal. I'm having such a good time here. <laughs> There's so much variety here. Like I, I, I'm already thinking about playing it again, just so I can um, check out uh, the other rooms, see what's going on there. Okay, uh, the truth seven. Okay. Thanks to your cunning investigation, you now have a better idea of what is going on. You're not the real culprit here. There is much more happening behind the scenes of the Excelsior Hotel, and you're caught in the middle. Um, read the text below based on which two lead assets are in play. Okay, we have Tome of Rituals and Manager's Key. Give me not time more locket. Here we go. Manager's Key and Tome of Rituals are in play. The Enclave has been performing a terrible witch roll for days. Uh, intending to change every last human inside the Excelsior Hotel into wretched monstrosities. Um, the staff were the first to change, and if you aren't quick, you'll be next. The transformation has already begun. Remove all doom from play. Advance the act and agenda deck to the set aside the true culprit version X. It is both the current... Oh! Oh, we're looking for version... or for version 10. Okay, not X. Okay. Um, all right, so we just remove all this doom. Advance the act. And agenda deck to the set aside true culprit version 10. Okay. Ooh, I can't wait to flip this. It's the last one. Oh, is there... Okay, there is text on the backside, but it's for, for other things. Okay. Um... Spawn the set-aside Dimensional Shambler in the basement. Great! <laughs> Directly in play with me. Um, but... Oh, this is at the end of the round, not at the end of play. So let me take a moment to pause. Flip. Untap. Gain a resource. Draw a card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm good on that. And then back in the booklet. Spawn the set-aside dimensional shambler in the basement. Shuffle each guest in the victory display into the encounter deck. All right, there's no guest there. Along with the encounter discard pile, place two doom um, on the true culprit, version 10. All right. Each guest enemy loses victory zero, loses innocent, and gains cultist. Oh, no. Great. Uh, basement gains test for willpower or evade. You may remove one clue from a lead asset uh, in the basement to reduce the difficulty of this test by two. If you succeed, remove one doom from the agenda. Excellent. So I'm glad I just supercharged those with the uh, with them. And I like the idea that the pallid man is also the man in the pallid mask is also just in the basement watching all of this unfold. All right, let's go find our monstrous shambler. Or dimensional shambler, I should say. And we're in the basement, so we're going we're going straight to it. And it's four per investigator, and I have plenty of charges to go around. You are now ready to continue playing. Okay. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Oof. All right. Sweating here. It's getting intense. All right. So I'm assuming I still plays Doom on it at the start of the round. Okay. Do not read until the end of the scenario. All right, so off the top. Oh boy, we get a guest. <laughs> Spawn, nearest hall location. Okay, they lose zero innocent and gain cultist. Okay, I think I think though they still they they don't engage with me like they still spawn at the nearest hall, which in this case would be the foyer. Okay. They are not. They lose victory zero. They are not innocent, and they gain cultist, which I don't think is a keyword 
uh, for like the rules, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, not in that instance. Well, anyway. Uh, we're gonna crush this here. Let's start with getting rid of this dimensional sampler. Um, after he deals me damage from the attack, reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it's the auto fail, it snatches you from the dimension. <laughs> Remove dimensional shambler from the game and you are defeated. Oh no! No, 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 thank you. I don't, I do not want that, for sure. So let's start by just trying to throw some pot shots at this thing. Alright, so first action. Azure Flame. It's at, ooh, it's at four versus my six. Oh wait, no, I'm at 8, because Azure, uh, upgraded Azure Flame gives me plus 2, so I'm, I'm looking good. I'm good looking good here. Yeah, minus 2 is not going to cut it, so it immediately takes 2 damage. And then burning from the other Azure Flame. Uh, skull token is uh, 0, so boom, Dimensional Shambler, taken care of. Easy. And then third action will just be to remove one of these, taking a lead acid off. Well, okay, take it, taking a lead acid off to reduce it by two. Um, and now we will start committing um, some cards here. Uh, we'll commit Ritual Candles, and we will commit uh, Prescient as well, I think. So that'll put me at uh, six. Oh, and this time we will burn Jackie's ability. Um, and I think I'll, I'll say that it's, uh, odd. Let's go with odd. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. I succeed on all of these. Odd will do it. And I can return a spell to my hand. You know, I'm going to be getting, uh, uh, word protection back because I don't want to deal with any thing happening over there. Nice. Alright. It doesn't mean it's going to go back up doom-wise, but if I can just do one, two, three next turn, I will have cleared it and, you know, no issues there. Alright. Okay, it does not say that they lose a loop, but because they go to the nearest crime scene, which would be um, the basement here, they also come end up down here with me. Um, yeah, they're aloof, so I don't I don't have to worry about um, engaging with them. I think like I, I feel pretty secure in that. I I feel like as long as I draw well, things are gonna go okay. Uh, in drawing the token bags. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Finally, I see one of the guts twos that I've had uh, plenty of in a long time. All right, this goes back up to three. And then uh, draw a card off the top. Excellent. Um, no, match to the nearest non-crime scene. So we can just put that at the hall, uh, giving it plus two shroud, which that's okay. That's, that's fine. We'll just put some incriminating evidence there in the hall. Um, and then we are going to investigate like crazy. So remove one of those. Um, where is my chaos bag? Here we are. Uh, putting it to two versus our six. Uh, minus three, we succeed. All right, and then doing it again. This time we'll burn the guts to go super high and we'll use Jackie's ability Actually, you know what? No, I, th I think we're okay. Yeah, just the skull, so we get the second one. And then uh, we draw two cards, we succeed. Oh no! Uh, well, I'm not going to be playing anytime soon. Um, but we will, let's see, be burning Voice of Ra and Astral Travel. Um, and I guess both words of protection. Because we really want to succeed here. 
and we're just going to use, now we're gonna use Jackie's ability to reveal three and uh, cancel you, cancel you. And then, yeah, we succeed. Did it, did it chat. Ugh. I was really sweating there for a while. <laughs> like I was pretty sure that this was not gonna go nearly how I wanted it to. Um. If there's no doom on the agenda, okay, because it does flip that doom over to hotel guests. But the point is, we, we succeed, we succeed, we did it. Whew. Took out the dimensional shambler, and I'm assuming just uh, undid the work that the cult was doing here, um, turning the uh, guests into cultists. All right, advance. If this advantage is advantaged by reaching the Doom Threshold, pawn on the otherworldly board. Um, ooh, oh no, I'm I'm like flavoring, I'm reading through this text like a little bit, um, but we'll we'll avoid spoilers for this because uh, oh man, it's so good. I'm gonna play this scenario a bunch of times. Um, if the agenda advanced because you completed its objective, the book is closed now, and as you fasten the latch and tuck it under your arm and you hope and pray that you can keep it safe and that it will never be opened again. You know firsthand that only madness lies within its weathered pages, and it is now up to you to protect it from falling into the wrong hands, to breathe a bit easier, and find some measure of comfort in knowing that the strange goings-on of the Excelsior Hotel have been put to rest, at least for now. All right, let's advance to R1. Uh... Here we go. Nobody will ever believe what you witnessed at the Excelsior. Not three days later, the hotel was open again like nothing had ever happened. You know better, though. You witnessed it all firsthand. The events continue to haunt your dreams and your waking thoughts. Even now, you go out of your way to avoid the Excelsior. The weeks have passed, and there has been no sign of any other nefarious schemes within its accursed walls. The only thing that can quiet the echoing memories of that horrible experience is a visit to the local speakeasy. But all the booze in the world can't keep the grisly visions from your nightmares, waking you in the dead of night with a violent start soaked in sweat. That's when you notice the person asking around town about the Excelsior. Innocent questions at first, but more prodding with each passing day. Surely they will believe you. Somebody has to. You may have broken free of the Excelsior's grasp, but there will be other victims. Of that, you are sure. You grab a piece of paper and hastily scribble a note. It's all a facade. Room 225 night. It's not over. If they can see past the veil of the Excelsior's operation, then maybe others can too. It may not be too late to stop it all from happening again. Uh, in the campaign log, record the Excelsior is quiet for now. The lead investigator must add what they, what have you done to the weakness uh, to their deck. Oh no, I have to keep this. I have to keep this around with me. <laughs> uh, well, at least it's not too bad because I, I imagine I'm not parlaying all the time. Um, they may also choose to add the Bloodstained Dagger story asked to their deck as well. Both cards do not count towards the deck. So I, I don't know about this one. Like, it's nice to have, um, another fight asset. And it is uh, a wild card. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll keep this. Who knows? Um, let's see. If the police are on your side, which is not the case, I could have added Sergeant Monroe, which, good to know. Like, he's, he's pretty handy. Five costs, though a lot especially for the ally slot where um you know it's uh the, the ally slot's very valuable five is quite a bit to ask um but it would be nice to have a way to kill the arcane initiate anyway i i don't get it because they don't believe me if the police don't believe you do not add him to the investigator's deck additionally if there are at least one police enemy uh in the victory display there's not so i don't have to worry about that otherwise i'd have to search uh, the collection for a detective board madness weakness and add it to the lead investigator's deck. Um, otherwise, uh, I gain victory X uh, for each card in the victory display, which is a lot. I think it's one, two, three, four, five uh, down here with the office. So I managed to gain two extra victory display. Fantastic.
All right. Excellent. Ooh, so good. That is that is a great scenario. Oh my goodness. And I can see why people are always raving about it. Um, just the variety that you can get, the different scenarios, and how it uses the like the same locations and things. Like the minute I turn the stream off, I'm just gonna start flipping things up <laughs> and seeing what else is going on here, so I can uh, look forward to the next time I play it. Man, so good. Jeez. And I'm glad I was able to come away with some experience because I definitely need like a little boost for my uh, investigator deck for the rest of the Carcosa um, campaign. That's for sure. But man, we were able to take out the Dimensional Shambler um, and then Mr. Trombley as well, even though he and another uh, staff member were both spawned at the same time. So that's, you know, not great, but at least I got rid of them. Uh, pretty quickly didn't have to deal with multiple combat rounds with them and managed not to kill anyone i feel good about that i feel good about not, not having gone out and killed anyone either um oh you know what does the basement flip to actually give me a victory point because it doesn't have any I'm, I'm gonna investigate this like i'm gonna sit here for a while and probably just pour over this um like gelatinous uh delicious meal that I've just consumed here of a Arkham Horror scenario. Um, I hope uh, if if you hung out with me tonight, first off, thanks for coming by. If it's your, uh, like you're watching the vid, I, I hope it was a good time. I, I know I had a good time. I'm going to just, oof, cool down after this one. Man, that was a good time. Jeez, let me just turn on some different kind of music. Oof. Yeah, this was this was excellent. I can see if I if I'm not mistaken, the person who designed this ended up actually now works on Arkham Horror the card game, um, and it's so good. Oh my goodness, there's like so much uh, variety that could happen here. Like I said, I, I I can see this being like a fun standalone just to play on its own, and I I think I definitely will once I start adding some more cards to my collection. In the meantime, um, Jacqueline Fine managed to survive and not take um, ludicrous amounts of damage, which I kind of expected to be the case. Uh, did not need clairvoyance as much as I needed to, but definitely did need it. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it for the night. So uh, y'all have a good weekend. It's Thursday, right? So take care and uh, bye.